Hello there. You've just caught me chilling out in my office. Now, I know that normally this time of the year is, uh, well, it's when we bring the noise, bring the thunder, you know? It's the last Jimquisition of the year. It's normally where we look at the worst games that have come out in the past 12 months. But you know what? I'm just tired of that. I'm tired of the rancor, of the mudslinging, of the outrage. I just want a chance to get personal, you know? I've left the gym position studio in the hands of an old friend, I'm sure he'll take good care of it. So, in the meantime, until we get back to business as usual, let's just have a chat it, you know? Me and me, close to the Do you think the games are over? Do you think you will walk away untested? All the games have only just begun. That I have ensured. It's time to play a game. Ten of them, in fact. It's time for the top ten shittiest games of 2015. Take it away, Skeletor. Hmm. Batman Arkham Knight. Batman Arkham Knight deserves a place on this list for the sheer bloody horror show that was the PC version of the game. While running okay on consoles, Arkham Knight's simultaneous PC launch was a disaster. The game ran like shit on an unforgivable number of systems, with skipping and frame rate dips that ranged from playable for some to downright unbearable for others. I had one of the better experiences, and it was still fucking atrocious. Absolutely unacceptable from a big name publisher. It was so bad that Warner Brothers was forced to pull the game from Steam and issue an apology. An unprecedented move for a publisher that once admitted it was too busy working on DLC to fix the broken Arkham Origins. The apology rang hollow considering the PC port was farmed out to a small studio with very little time to do it and there's no way WB didn't know the game was fucked before it launched it. This would have been bad enough but when the game was finally re-released for sale months and months later it was still buggered and the devs admitted Arkham Knight was probably unfixable. Yet they sold it anyway and continue to sell it, offering refunds to look like good guys when they should have just kept it pulled. A complete nightmarish mess, even if it did work properly, there's still one word to describe the uninspired, paint-by-numbers, open-world sludge that is Arkham Knight. A dull game at best, and an inexcusable disregard for customers at worst. Oh, and its season pass was a waste of money, even by friggin' season pass standards. Which are low, by the way. They're very low, is what I was saying. There. Uncrowded! Uncrowded is one of the half a dozen games to have appeared this year that look identical to each other. They're all from different developers, they all have different names, but they look the same. Same gameplay, same model, same map. Uncrowded is the one that actually made it to the Steam store, but on Greenlight you can find a ton of them. Day Survival Begins, Pixel Z, Craftlands, all of them the same. This is because Uncrowded and its clones aren't really games. They're all Unit Z, a pre-packaged asset pack sold on the Unity Store. Unit Z offers a fully playable open world map with enemies, survival elements and combat. It's supposed to be a foundation, a base upon which to build an original game. Except a dozen sly fuckers decided instead to just throw the shit up on Greenlight completely unaltered. Uncrowded is the one that slipped through the cracks, but it is a mere representative of the lazy hack cut and pasters who partook in the most pathetic asset flip of them all. Literally reselling something they bought as original work. Fuck asset flip fuck Uncrowded, and fuck every pissed scum trying to sell Unit Z. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5! If we 
ignore the fact that Fellowship of Evil takes the name of a series I loved and uses it to sell a cynical, sloppy, horribly half-baked Diablo ripoff, Overlord Fellowship of Evil is still a cynical, horribly half-baked Diablo ripoff. Combat is nothing but brainless button mashing with only the vaguest and most half-hearted of nods to the original Overlord games. The prior installment's minions make an appearance, but they're fucking useless. Their pathfinding is patently broken as they frequently run into this magic grass shit that turns them into enemies, meaning the game's sole defining factor is a fucking liability to the player. There are no real customization options, there are four classes that are basically two classes, featuring restrictively linear upgrade progression. It runs like shit, looks unimpressive, the whole thing feels cheaply made, knocked out on the quick to try and reap a few extra bucks off an old license. Which of course is where Fellowship of the Ring piece really cheeses my onions, because Overlord was a good game, it had its problems, many problems, but it was a great idea that could have been refined into something special. Instead, we get this cynical, creatively bankrupt pube pile that is totally unbalanced for single player, but has nobody playing it, so you can't do it fucking co-op either. An absolute disgrace of a spin-off that has raked the Overlord name through the shitting mud. Galactic Hitman! Galactic Hitman comes to us courtesy of our friends at Digital Homicide, the sensitive man-boys who brought us such delights as the Slaughtering Grounds and the aptly named Temper Tantrum. I went with this over Temper Tantrum because of its duplicity. This is one of two games Digital Homicide snuck onto Steam under a completely different name, the other game being Devil's Share, which was marginally better if only because I didn't fall through the fucking map on that one. Yet another hack job asset flip, Galactic Hitman is remarkably shitty due to it taking fairly basic FPS combat and somehow making a complete mess of it. If you duck, enemies can't hit you at all, but if you stand, you're cut down in seconds because they all hit you and you have no defence. It's glitchy, it's ugly, it doesn't work like normal video games should, and above all it got greenlit under false pretenses. It's also one of the 20 plus games Digital Homicide has shut out in less than two years. Just another slapped together collection of prepackaged models and maps as part of some weird fucking racket that this studio, which has been trying to sell these games under a laundry list of fake names is running. Galactic Shitman is utter scrotum. It doesn't even have a target reticule for fuck's sake. As with any digital homicide game, you could slap it together yourself with some money and some time if you're a horrible person who wants to make planet Earth a worse place. Pixels difference! It's somewhat telling that Pixels, a movie ostensibly about the love and good of video games, didn't have a real video game tie-in. Instead, it got Pixels Defense, a free mobile game that is every bit as cynical and slapdash as the grotty little Adam Sandler movie that I still haven't seen, but wanted to join the hate parade on because if Sandler's allowed to be an exploitative bastard, so am I. Pixels Defense does the bare minimum required to be a tower defense game, stripped down and basic as it is. You put units in strictly designated areas using an unresponsive interface that barely registers your taps, and then you let luck take over as you never know where the enemies are coming from or if the game will actually remember to make your units attack things. The interface is a clusterfuck. You can't tap on a unit without a huge info box obscuring the screen and covering up vast tracts of territory that you can no longer interact with, making commands almost impossible to perform. Even the tutorial is difficult to get through just because the AI doesn't work half the time. The only reason this load of cold spunk doesn't rank lower is because A it's free and B it's pixels. So only idiots like me still give a fucking toss. Taken! Taken represents all the shitty first person horror games on Steam. All of them. They all deserve to be on this list, but last year people hated seeing so many shitty Steam games, so I tried to choose something representative, even though a lot of wanky Steam games are still on this list. Taken has nothing to do with Liam Neeson, and everything to do with lazily cobbled together mazes that exist without any context. You navigate these mazes of indistinct textures and eye-gougingly horrible visual effects while pursued by a stereotypical little monster girl who you can often find half stuck in a wall. You can't even fail the game unless you try, so inept is your wood be Predator. Unless you actively walk into the girl, she won't fucking touch you. The game's also really dodgy due to a shady Kickstarter campaign, a lack of promised features, and the only positive reviews being from the developers and their friends. Hmm. For all these reasons and more, Taken is more than a single entry, but a representative of everything that was and continues to be dreadful about Steam's appalling lack of quality control. As such, it's eligible for a new sub award I'm putting into our yearly shittiest games rundown. Taken gets the Everything Foreskinning Wrong with Steam Awards 2015. Good job taken. Now fuck off your sleazy little jizz ring. Ravens Cry! 
Raven's Cry is so bad it had to fail twice. When it first launched, this eons in development pirate RPG from Topware was a broken and buggy shambles. Production value was lower than my old wretched bulls, with missing audio files, weird animation glitches, and performance issues up the wazoo. Some of its issues were downright bizarre, like the weird fisheye look character models acquired, and how they'd grow and shrink in size to bizarre proportions. Even without the problems, the game was shit, with awful laggy combat and ship battles that were literally unwinnable, because fast enemy ships could retreat and stay retreating forever, forcing you to reload a save in order to play the game again. On oh, speaking of save files, they got wiped at some point because of course they did. The game was written like some pirate themed porno, so cheesy and improperly directed that I expected all the pirates to tear their clothes off and shag at any given second. Actually, that pirates movie with Belladonna and Jesse Jane in it was better written than this bollocks. Anyway, Topware was pretty fucking cavalier about all the complaints, but smelled a chance at either redemption or a second day in the spotlight because they released the game with a bunch of alleged fixes. Vendetta, Curse of Raven's Cry was the same game, but marginally improved. It was still clunky shit, and I still hate its rotten, slizzing guts. Vendetta proved you can't polish a turd, but it'll still stink like fucking shit, mate. Gabe Newell Simulator! If you want a cynical, meme-riddled exploitation of so-called internet humour, look no further than Gabe Newell Simulator. It's a third-person shooter, but they whack Simulator in the name because that's popular and will help it show up in searches. It's got Gabe Newell in it because Gaben is a mimetic gag among 12-year-olds and therefore, haha, ha, we're all supposed to laugh. It's got a Half-Life 3 joke in it because of course it does those never get old. And then when you get down to it, it's just another asset flip. A bunch of cobbled together enemies and shit bought from Unity and thrown willy-nilly into a bunch of terrible map corridor levels that contain maybe 20 minutes of content at best and what's wrong with his fucking arm? The big joke of Gabe Newell Simulator begins and ends with the title. The software itself is just another bare bones, just about works, physics defying Babby's first Unity game that could make any decent hearted human cringe into their own ribcage. The worst part is, Newell had to have allowed the use of his name and likeness, which means this kind of gutter trash, this river scum, this further infection of Steam's storefront has Valve's complete and shameless blessing. That's just goddamn embarrassing, and what's wrong with his fucking arm? <laughs> Alone in the Dark Illumination is a cooperative shooter in which you use light to fight monsters, meaning it's a game in which you're neither alone nor in the dark. At its most basic foundation, the latest Alone in the Dark manages to completely bulls up the series' premise. Atari itself is little more than a hollow corpse these days, worn by its corporate acquirers like a grisly rotting suit. Its past library of games have been steadily exploited for name value, farmed out to cowboys who have no respect for the source material. We've had the dreadful haunted house, the utterly senseless asteroids rehash, and this. This absolute mockery. This miserable clump of wet, artless garbage. Once the bedrock of survival horror, Alone in the Dark is now a simplistic and skeletal left for dead. One that clearly wasn't finished before being shunted out for launch. Enemies can shoot you through walls, there's no music or voice acting. Sound files for explosions are straight up missing. Mission briefings are huge blocks of silent text. The whole thing plays and feels like a goddamn early access game, except it isn't. As with all cheap spermy co-op games, it's borderline unplayable in single Single player and a complete ghost town online, making it worth less than nothing to pretty much everyone. To quote myself, Alone in the Dark Illumination is ugly in every sense of the word, and I don't just mean that visually, although it is about as attractive as an anus in an eye socket. Hideous both inside and out, it's the consummate fraud that hides behind a recognisable name to deliver interactive poison. The kind of game that has systematically eroded the game industry over the last few years, cashing in the trust and goodwill of the audience for a quick and very dirty Bark. Games like this are toxic and have no place in a medium that respects itself. Everyone who had a hand in this disaster ought to be fucking ashamed of themselves, but it does at least have one achievement to its name. It is, officially, 2015's shittiest game. <laughs> oh.
positivity. Well, that was the top 10 shittiest games of 2015. I hope you enjoyed the show. I know I did. Thanks, as always, to Skeletor for taking over MC duties. Uh, I have no idea what that transmission from the weird shrimp mask guy was all about, but who knows where that could lead? Somewhere stupid, I'll bet. I guess until next year now, all that remains to be said is thank God for me, fuck Konami, and the Jimquisition will see you in 2016.